I'll sing that real loud. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, your good, good father. To you are. To you are, to you are, I am loved by you. To I am, to I am, to I am. Father God, we thank you so much, God, that you love us, God, that you sent Jesus die on the cross for our sins, God, that we can always come running back to you, God. Continue to speak to us this morning, Father, as you open up our eyes, God, and let us see that we are not in this fight alone, God, that we are not in this battle by ourselves, God, that you are right there, God, that you are fighting on our behalf, God. Bless this day. Bless Mark as he comes to bring your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, hey, listen, man, it is so good to worship with you guys here today. Now, now listen, I, man, you guys are doing awesome today in the chat room. It's great to see you guys saying hi and you're worshiping along with us today. Hey, right now, why don't you do us a favor? Why don't you go ahead and tag somebody that you would say hi to at church anyway? Won't you go ahead and tag somebody in the comment section? Won't you go ahead and say hi to somebody you'd always say hi to every Sunday? Why don't you go ahead and say, what's up? How's it going? How's your week been? To somebody that you'd talk to every single Sunday. Maybe in the comments, you've seen somebody brand new. Won't you say hi to them? Summit, let's welcome our guests today. Now, if you are joining us for the very first time, my name's Mark, and I am the lead pastor. Man, we're just excited to have you here today. In fact, we have a free gift for everybody that's joining us for the very first time. All you need to do to get that gift, we'll email it to you. All you need to do is uh, click the link that's going to show up in your comment box here in just a moment, Dana Hall is going to share that link. And click that link. You can do it now or later on in the service. Get, just give us some quick information. Uh, it takes about 10 seconds to fill out. This week we'll email you your first-time gift. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, all right? Well, guys, listen. We are going to continue to worship uh, by receiving our tithes and our offerings. And so right now, in just a moment, I believe there's going to be a link that's going to come up in the comments section uh, where you can click that link, you can give online, or it's going to give you some information about how you can mail your tithes and offerings right here to our church. You know, one of the things we say all the time is that giving is worship. And, and giving really is worship because worship isn't just singing. Worship is surrendering our hearts to God. And, and every single time you give, something happens in your heart. It, it's, it's exactly what Jesus says, that, that, that where our treasure is, man, our hearts just follow our treasure. We, we invest in, we put our resources towards things we care about, and that's what happens. So as we put our resources, our times, our talent, and treasure towards the things of God, 
All of a sudden in our hearts, we care more about the things of God. We care more about God's kingdom. We care more about people meeting Jesus and and that sort of thing. So I just want to challenge you. Uh, You guys are doing so great, man. It's amazing how so many of you have jumped onto online giving in the past few weeks. So there's a link right now in your chat room box. Go ahead and click that link. You can give online or you can mail your tithes and offerings right here to Summit Church. The address is 147 Century Circle, Hazard, Kentucky, 41701. All right, all that info is right there in the chat room. Uh, go ahead and take advantage of that. And, uh, and the reason we do this every week is because, man, this is what we would do every Sunday. Like, so if you are watching for the first time or you've been watching, you're thinking, man, I wonder what their church is like you know, when they start having physical gatherings. I wonder what it would be like if I were there. Uh, This is what you would be, this is the way that it is. We've just been doing worship the way that we've always been doing it. So you are seeing what you would get every single Sunday this morning. So we're just excited to have you guys here this morning. If you're excited to be here with us live on Facebook, man, let me see some emojis. Let me see the new care emoji. You know, the little the little yellow guy, he's hugging a heart. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen, man. Give me the care emoji right now. I tell you what, guys, I'm going to pray and we're going to jump right in, all right? I'm excited to uh, uh, just to open up God's Word and to share with us what we've got here uh, for us today. So, so let's pray. Wherever you're at, man, just, let's just pray, okay? So when we say pray, hey, join with us. Don't just kind of watch people pray. Uh, bow your heads. Let's pray right there wherever you're at, all right? Jesus, I pray that right now, God, you would just come. And Jesus, that you would speak. God, God, I need to hear from you. God, we need to hear from you. And so, Jesus, would you just wake us up? to the reality that, God, you're not out there, you're right here. You're not far off. You're not looking down on us from from a distant galaxy. Jesus, you are Emmanuel, God with us. The Spirit lives inside of us. Father, you are a very present help in times of trouble, and so, God, you're here. You're right in that living room with that family. You're right right there in, in the house with that person, in the car with that person, watching on a phone. Maybe somebody is going to watch this, not today live, years from now they're going to watch it. And you're with them. And so God, right now in this moment, speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we are in a series called The Deeper Life. We started it last week, and so uh, if you want to go ahead and check, if you want to check back in on what we've been doing the past couple of weeks, honestly, it's ne- it's it's really easy to go back and to listen to uh, to past sermons. All you need to do is you can find them on our website. You can find them on our app. Uh, if you have the Summit app downloaded, just scroll to the main bottom of the app, and uh, right there at the bottom it says "Watch a service," and all of our services are in there. You can watch this service in the app later on the day. You can watch it on our YouTube channel. Uh, We go live every Sunday right here on Facebook, or it comes up on YouTube later on. We're in a series called The Deeper Life, and and our goal in this series is, our goal is honestly not to come out of this COVID-19 moment the same as we were when we walked into it. Uh, We don't don't want to walk out uh, just with a new normal. We want to walk out deeper, stronger, more like Jesus and more in love with him. That's what we want in this moment. That's what we want in this season so that it's the deeper life. Last week we talked about how that starts with repentance, turning from our sin, turning to God. And today what I want us to talk about is I want us to look at how to have joy in the midst of chaos. How you and I can have joy in the midst of chaos. I saw some uh, statistics a couple of weeks ago. Listen to, these, listen to these numbers here. Listen to these. 48% of Americans right now are anxious about possibly getting COVID-19. 62% of people are anxious about the possibility of a family member getting COVID-19. 57% of Americans are worried about how COVID-19 is going to affect them financially. Now listen to this one. Listen to this. Almost half of Americans say they're worried about running out of food, medicine, or supplies. So it is really easy to find chaos right now, isn't it? But how in the world can you and I have joy in the midst of chaos? Now, now you may be watching this and you're thinking, listen, why, why does this even matter? Why is joy important? Here's why joy is important, because God wants you to have joy. God wants you, God wants me, God wants all of us to have joy. I don't know if you've ever heard this or not, but did you know that God is a happy God? Did you know that? 
We have this idea that God's in heaven and he's angry all the time. He's always upset. He's upset at everything. He's upset with us. Listen, God is a joyful God. Did you know that summit? I mean, before God made anything, God existed in perfect community. The Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. So he, he had joy. There was love. There was fellowship. Man, God, God was happy. God had joy. God didn't create you and I because he was lonely. Hello? Right? God doesn't need anything. God is a joyful God. Uh, Galatians 5 says joy is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit wants to produce in you, produce in me joy. I mean, joy is, is literally a way that we can tell the Holy Spirit lives in us and, and to the degree that, that he's a reality in our lives. So joy matters. Joy matters to God, and he wants to give you joy. But maybe you're watching this, and you're saying, okay, Mark, listen. That sounds fine for other people, but I am literally the only person alive right now that God doesn't want to give joy to. Mark, there, there's no way that I can have joy, and maybe that's you right now. You feel that way. There's no way that I can have joy right now. COVID-19, everything going on, joy, joy, there's no way that I can have joy right now. And I don't know what your situation is. I mean, here you are, you're watching me. I can't see you. And, and, and I don't really know what your situation is. But here's why a lot of people say that. One of the reasons people say there's no way that I can have joy is because we're convinced that joy is connected to our circumstances. So if my situation is right, then I can have joy. This is why joy and happiness are different things. Because for a lot of us, I'm happy based on my situation. So if I have certain circumstances, a certain situation, if things are right and I get to define what right is, then I can have joy, then I can be happy. But listen to me, some at Facebook, let's just get real this morning. If joy is contingent on our circumstances being a certain way, guys, we're never going to have it. If the only way I can be happy, have joy, is when situations and circumstances are in the way that I want it, the way that I define it. Things have got to be a certain way if I'm going to have joy. Guys, listen, I'm never going to have joy. Have you ever planned a vacation for your family and you're convinced this is going to be the vacation that everybody talks about for years? The kids are going to get along better because of this. Our family is going to be so much closer. We are going to love each other so much more because this vacation is going to be amazing. You get in the car to start going towards that vacation and the kids fight the whole way, right? The, the hotel is not the way that it looked online when you booked it. And all of a sudden, it's not the way that you thought it was, therefore, no joy. Or maybe you're thinking, you know what, man, I just got to get to the beach this summer. The beach would make me happy. The beach would take away all my stress. And then you go to the beach and it rains every day, <laughs> right? You go to the beach, maybe, and you get sand in places it shouldn't be. Hello, Facebook, are you with me, right? And all of a sudden, you don't have the joy that you thought you would have if you were in a certain situation. So if joy is based on our situation, guys, we're never going to have it. We're, we're, we're never going to have it, all right? So what is joy? I love the way that Henry Nouwen defines joy. He, listen to what he says here. Joy is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love from you. Did you hear that, Facebook? Joy is knowing that we're unconditionally loved and that nothing, not even COVID-19, nothing can take it from us. You say, where in the world can we see that kind of joy on display? Here's the answer, the book of Philippians. So if you've got a Bible, I want you to go ahead and open it up, turn it on to the book of Philippians. Now, the book of Philippians is a really small book in your New Testament. It's literally just four chapters. We're going to have some devotions going this week uh, in the Summit app, and we'll talk about it in midday prayer every single day on Facebook. Between 12 and 1, we go live, and we're going to walk through the book of Philippians all this week. But the book of Philippians is a book about joy. Four chapters. I mean, you could probably read this book in less than 20 minutes. It's really short. This book is about joy, but it's written in the middle of chaos. Paul is in prison. He doesn't know if he's going to get out. He doesn't know if he's going to be killed, executed in the next few minutes. Everything that was normal for the Apostle Paul, it's been taken away from him. This is chaos, but he writes about joy. 
In fact, listen to what Paul says about joy. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to skip around the book of Philippians, so just have it with you, and we'll get rooted in it in just a minute. Philippians 3, 1. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Listen to chapter 4, verse 4 in Philippians. Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say it. Rejoice. I love that verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. And for the people in the back, rejoice in case you didn't hear me. Right? Here's the thing. Joy is a command. You and I are commanded to have joy. See, this is why we can't wait for joy to magically just fall on us. We can't wait for joy for God to just like sprinkle some joy pixie dust on us. This is what a lot of us are doing. I can't have joy because I'm praying for it and I don't get it. I can't have joy because I because I, I I'm looking for it, but it's not magically appearing in my life. Listen, the only way that you and I can have joy is if we cultivate it, and once we get it, guard it. You gotta cultivate joy. And you got to fight to keep it. You got to cultivate it and you got to guard it. So, Summit, listen, I just, listen, I'm going to lay my cards on the table. I want to be totally honest with you guys, all right? Watch this. Be totally honest. It is, it is a scary time right now. I mean, it, it is. It, it's a time of uncertainty. A lot of people are afraid. There's a lot of fear going on. Chaos seems everywhere in this moment. But the invitation to have joy from God is still on the table for you and me. And, and, and I'm not about to give this sermon based on living out of joy 24-7, 365. I, I'm, I'm not a person. I'm laying my cards on the table here. I'm not a person that lives in a constant state of joy. I'm just not. But here's what I know. I know that I want it. I know that I want joy. Do you want joy? If you want joy, let me know in the, in the comment section. Let me hear it in the, in, the, in the comments. See some emojis. Do you want joy? Do you want it? Because it's not going to magically appear. If you pray for joy, but then you complain the rest of the day, you will not have joy. You have to cultivate it and guard it. So the question is how? And the first way that we cultivate and guard, let's be as practical as we can. I think God's really helpful here. Book of Philippians, practical. How can you and I cultivate, guard joy? The first way that we got to cultivate it, develop it, and fight for it in our lives is we need to reframe our reality. Reframe our reality. Paul is in jail, doesn't know if he's going to get out, live, or die. Listen to what he says in chapter 1, verse 12. I want you to know, brothers, that what's happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. What? What's happened to me? I'm in jail. I don't know if I'm going to live or die, but what's happened to me is serving to advance the gospel. In other words, guys, God's doing something. I wish that I could get out of jail. I want everything to change around me, but God is doing something, Paul says. And here's the thing, Summit, listen, he's not faking it. He's not trying to be spiritual. He's not putting on a show Paul means it. And here's the thing. Paul is not a person that lives in a constant, unceasing sense of joy. He's got to cultivate it and guard it. How does he do it? How do I know that Paul doesn't live with this constant state of joy? He's got to fight for it. He's got to build it in his life. Chapter 3, verse 12. Now, we will spend some time here, so look at this verse. All right, we've been bouncing around. Chapter 3, verse 12, Philippians. You with me? Not that I've already obtained this or am already perfect. I, I haven't already obtained this. He's talking about joy. I haven't already obtained this yet, guys. But I press on, watch this, I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Paul says, listen, listen, I want joy and I don't have it all the time and God wants me to have it. My situation is horrible. So it's as if the apostle Paul looks at his circumstances and says, listen, in the face of everything, everything around me, here is the truest thing about me. Jesus has made me his own. That's verse 12. Do you hear it? The, the truest thing about my life, Paul says, is that Jesus has made me his own. Jesus has taken hold of my life. Jesus is even at work right now. Sometimes it's hard to see, but Jesus has taken hold of me. He, he's at work in my circumstances. Paul says, listen, this is the truest thing about me. 
The truest thing about me is what Jesus says and what He's doing in my life. Summit, Facebook, let me ask you a question right now. What is the truest thing about you? Let me ask you another question. What is the truest thing about what's happening to you right now? What's the truest thing about you? What's the truest thing about your reality, about your situation? Listen, if you are in Christ, man, if you're a follower of Jesus, the truest thing about you is not COVID-19. It's that Jesus has laid hold of your life. And you might not see it in quarantine, but God is at work. So reframing your reality, reframing your reality isn't just looking at what I see. This is why living by faith is not looking at what we see. We look to what we don't see. Hello. Right? Living by faith is looking beyond the seen into the unseen. And so reframing your reality means that in Christ, at any given moment, the truest thing about us, uh, about us is Jesus and that we belong to him. So reframing your reality is not optimism. It's not trying to make lemonade out of lemons. Reframing your reality is asking in Christ what is true about me right now. In Christ, what's true about what I'm going through right now? See, listen, COVID-19, for some of us, this is the moment where we are going to have to decide, is God going to be an idea that I believe in and talk about on Sunday, or is he going to be a living person I've got a relationship with? This is going to be the moment, guys, COVID-19 is going to bring a reality out of what our faith is really made of. And this is going to be the moment where some of us are going to be forced to face, forced to, forced to decide, do we believe what we say we believe because it inspires us a little bit, makes us feel good? Or do we believe it because we've had a living encounter with the risen Jesus and he has radically changed our lives, Right? reframing your reality in Christ at any given moment. The truest thing about you is Jesus has laid hold of your life. That's reframing your reality. But the next thing we got to do if we're going to fight for joy, we're going to cultivate it, we're going to guard it in our lives, I think this one's really important, is we need to embrace the normal. You and I, we need to embrace the normal. See, most of Paul's days, the book of Philippians, most of Paul's days are in jail. His jail cell would have been extremely small. There would have been little steps that he could have taken in this cell. Yeah, he's writing the book of Philippians right here. But most of Paul's days are literally spent setting alone with his own thoughts. Just by himself in this jail cell. Nothing dynamic, nothing spectacular to look at. And yet somehow right in the middle of that normal, Paul developed an awareness of the presence of God in his life. Listen to this quote from Richard Foster about how joy comes into our lives. Guys, this quote is money. It's worth everything. Watch this. We need to understand that God does at times... Give us an infusion of joy, even in our bitterness and hard-heartedness. Now, this is what a lot of us think the way joy works. We just think that God's going to zap us with joy, right? Like we want joy, and God's in heaven, and God goes, and then, oh, joy. Oh, I got it. I'm happy all of a sudden, right? Every once in a while, every so often, that happens, but it's not normal. Here's how you you and I normally get joy. That is the abnormal situation. God's normal means of bringing his joy is by redeeming and sanctifying the ordinary junctures of human life. See, you and I, we like the new and exciting and spectacular. And there you are in quarantine with little things that are new, exciting, or spectacular. Can we just be real for a moment on Facebook this morning? A lot of us are bored, right? Sitting at home, not a lot to do. Places we want to go to, we can't. They're not open. And here's the thing. We want to see God in the new, in the exciting, and the spectacular. But listen to me. If we can't cultivate an awareness of the presence of God in the normal, everyday circumstance of our lives, guys, we're going to miss Him in the big. 
We're going to miss him in the spectacular. You and I, we need to develop, we need to build an awareness of the presence of God right there in isolation, in quarantine. So, So let me ask you a question just right now this morning. Can you see signs of God's goodness around you right now? Can't, think, about, think about it. Do a quick middle check. Can you see signs of God's goodness in your life right now? Some of you are sitting there, and here you are. Some of you are doing this. Well, listen, I want God to bless me, but he doesn't. God blesses other people. I, I'm, just not, I'm just not blessed. And you are watching me with a phone that literally connects you to the whole world. Some of you aren't just watching me on a TV. You're watching me on a smart TV. Uh-oh, right? Right? I mean, can look around. Can you literally right now look at your life and see anything good? The fact that you have life is a gift. I love James 1.17. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of life. Is there anything good in your life? Listen, then that is a gift from God. Thank Him for it. Praise God for it. Do you have, do you, listen, you with your family? Praise God, what a gift. Praise God, what a gift. You've got some health this morning. What a gift. You're, you're at home watching right now. What a gift. Or wherever you are, what a gift in your life. Maybe right now you're just enjoying a good cup of coffee. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I can feel revival coming through the screen right now this morning. Listen, every single thing is a gift. Every good thing is a gift from God. But you and I, man, I am guilty of this. I'm preaching to nobody but myself. I just go through my life. And just, and just take for granted the gifts of God when I am surrounded by signs that I am loved by a good, good father. Here, watch this. I'll give you an experiment to help, you, help your joy level go up in the next seven days. Starting today, take a minute or two, literally today. Do this sometime this afternoon, tonight, before you go to bed, whatever. Take a minute or two and write down every good thing that that day you are thankful for. And do it every day for the next seven days. And next Sunday, tell me about your joy level. Next Sunday, if you do that starting today for the next seven days, just a minute or two, write down every good thing from that day. Write down everything you're thankful for from that day. If you do that, guys, your joy level will rise. Right? Is anybody watching me and you've experienced the the goodness of God Man, praise God for it. Anybody watching, you've experienced God's salvation. You've experienced the filling of the Holy Spirit. You've experienced the presence of God, man. God made a way when you didn't see one. Do you see these things? We just got to look for the goodness of God. So embrace the normal. Embrace the normal. It'd be so easy to complain. It'd be so easy to live for the next press conference. But if you and I are going to cultivate joy, we need to look around and trace our lives to find the goodness of God. Can you do that? Right? So we want to cultivate joy. Man, I'm going to reframe my reality. Truest thing about me is Jesus. He's laid hold of my life. I'm going to embrace the normal. I'm going to look through my life every day to see the goodness and the gifts of God. Here's the last one. If we're going to cultivate and guard joy in our lives, we need to dwell on the right things. You and I, we need to dwell on the right things. Chapter 4, verse 8, look at it with me. It says this, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's anything excellence, if there's if there is any excellence rather, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Or your Bible might say, dwell on these things. Think about these things. Summit, listen to me. What you think about and your joy are connected. Let me say that again. That was really big. What you and I think about. And our joy is connected. See, it's not a question of whether or not things are shaping us right now. The question really is, what is shaping us right now? What are you thinking about? 
I find myself asking that to more and more people who are coming to me right now. And honestly, I find myself thinking about it. If you go back in our past sermons for the couple of week, past couple of weeks, this idea, this theme of thoughts renewing our mind, guys, it keeps coming up. Do a Bible study one time on the mind and how important God says our thoughts are. It's because your joy and your thoughts are connected. What are you thinking about in these days? What are you thinking about? When's things going to open up? When are things going to go back to normal? What's going to happen? Listen, if that's only where our thoughts are, it makes total sense. Why, we don't have joy. But the Bible says you, you literally need, God says, listen, you literally need. The Spirit's available. He wants to help us. You need to set your mind. You need to dwell on, think about certain things. Whatever is true. We talked about that. Jesus has laid hold of my life. What does Jesus say? Who is Jesus? What is he doing? Whatever's honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable. I love Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. It says, set your mind on things above. Literally, grab your mind, take your thoughts. The Bible says that, we, that, that our weapons are not of this world, that with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can take every thought captive. And so we need to set our minds on things above. What's above? Jesus is. Jesus is above. Jesus is above. Not set our minds on COVID-19 and all of the things that we can see. Summit, listen, let's look beyond what we can see into what we can't see with the eyes of faith. And let's set our minds, Colossians 3, 2, on Jesus. Why? Colossians 3, 3 says, Jesus is your life. Hello? COVID-19 will end. Quarantine will end. This season will end. Jesus will still be your life. Jesus will be your life now and for all of eternity. If you don't know Jesus, Jesus doesn't simply want to be a Sunday reality. Jesus doesn't simply want to save you and get you out of hell and help you only when this life ends. Jesus wants to be your life right now. Wants to be your life right now. God wants us to have joy, Summit. So guys, listen, let's not wait for joy to magically appear after COVID-19 is over. Let's cultivate it now. Let's fight for it now. And so maybe you're watching this and you're thinking, listen, Mark, this is the first time I've thought about joy since this whole thing started seven weeks ago. I, have, I haven't thought about joy at all. Mark, I haven't been doing this at all. I've just been living consumed with everything around me, news and just everything. Mark, I, have, I haven't thought about joy. I haven't done anything we've talked about this morning at all for seven weeks. If that's you, if that's you, I just want to give you Philippians 3, 13. It says, one thing I do, one thing I do, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. So listen, if you've just spent the past seven weeks living for Andy at five in the next press conference and you haven't thought about joy, been fighting for joy, let's forget about it, all right? It's in the past. God's got grace for us. Today is a new day. And let's set our minds on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Let's reframe our reality. He's laid hold of our lives. Let's embrace the normal. Wherever you're watching me right now, look around. Do you see any good gifts from a good Father? And let's watch about, let's think about what we think about. Let's dwell on the right things. What are we thinking about? Jesus. Let's set our minds on things above. So let's glance at the news and the latest update, but let's dwell on the things of God. So if you are in, listen, Summit, are you in on this? Are you in with me? Are you in on fighting for joy this week? Listen, right now, if you are in on cultivating joy, fighting for joy in your life, right now, just grab your phone, whatever it is, I want you to put in the comment section, I'm in. If, if this is you, say, hey, I want to start fighting for joy. I want to start cultivating joy in my life. Just put in the comment section right now, I'm in. Put it in there, I'm in. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in on fighting for joy. I'm in on cultivating it in my life. Are you in? Put it in the comments. I'm in. Go ahead and put it in there right now. Now, maybe you are watching this and you don't know Jesus. Man, this whole thing has opened you up to spiritual things. You didn't really go to church before, and you're watching this, and you're thinking, Mark, listen, I want that kind of joy. I want to tell you God wants to give it to you. 
Mark, you're talking about unconditional love. Man, I want that kind of love. I want to tell you God wants to give it to you. Mark, how can I have it? We talked about it last week. We'll say it right here. The way that you can experience right now, wherever you are, the mercy and the love of God is to turn from sin and turn to Jesus. Confess to God, God, I've sinned. I've been trying to do life without you and Jesus. I need you. Jesus, come into my life and save me. Is that you today? Right now, I want to give you an opportunity. Right now, in this, right now today, right here, where, wherever you're at, I want to give you an opportunity to pray and receive Jesus, to experience His love and mercy for the first time. Or if you're a follower of Jesus, I just want to pray with you today and ask God to give you strength to begin to cultivate and to guard joy in your life. Would you pray with me right now wherever you're at? Let's just, let's just go to God in prayer. And, and maybe you are watching this today and you want Jesus to come into your life and to be your Lord and Savior for the first time. You want to be saved. If that's you today, say, Mark, I want, I want God to come into my life and save me. I want to experience the love of God. I want that joy you're talking about. I want Jesus. Today, if you want to give your life to Jesus, wherever you are, just bow your head and close your eyes. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And listen to me, Facebook Summit, this is not a one-time prayer, one and done. No, this is a prayer that begins a relationship, a lifetime of following Jesus. I'm just trying to help you articulate what might be in your heart. So if you want to pray and give your life to Christ right now, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Forgive me for my sin. Come into my life and save me today. God, I give my life to you right now for the first time. Thank you for loving me, dying for me, and coming back from the dead for me. I give my life to you today. Help me to begin following you by your strength. And Father, right now I pray for, I pray for every follower of Jesus that's watching this. Pray for Summit. Pray for people who are watching this. Maybe they go to another church. I don't know where people are locally. God also, God, just what a gift. What a gift. God, there's people watching this around the nation right now in other states. People can even join us around the world. And Father, I pray that followers of Jesus in the days of COVID-19 would be people of joy. God, that the world would look at us and they would see a joy that surpasses our situation. God, we pray that the situation around us would change. We pray that our circumstances would change. But God, let us not believe the lie that says we cannot have joy if our situation doesn't look a certain way. Jesus, it was the joy before you that took you to the cross. So God, I pray that the people of God would be people of joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now listen to me. Listen, man, I would love to know what God is doing in your life today. I would love to know any decision that you made. I would love to know how we can pray for you. So right now, Dana is putting up in the comment section a connection card. And I want to ask everybody in just a moment, in just a moment, when I, we're about to go off the air here, we're about to wrap it up. In just a moment, I want everybody to click on that link and let us know what God did in your life today. If you gave your life to Christ, let us know. If you want help growing spiritually, let us know. If we can pray for you, let us know. I would love to know, hey, listen, Mark, I'm in on fighting for joy, garden it in my life. I am in on joy in the midst of chaos. Now, guys, right now here in just a little bit, just about <clears throat> 15 minutes, we're going to start Middle School Sunday. Alex Miller uh, is going to be uh, leading Middle School Sunday. Alex is going to throw a, uh, throw a link in the comment section right now for all six through eighth graders. So if you live with a middle schooler, uh, you've got one in your life, go ahead and message them, text them, say, hey, listen, man, Summit's about to do something for middle schoolers. You ought to jump in. It's going to be so fun. 1230, Middle School Sunday in Zoom in just a few minutes. Guys, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We've got so many groups and opportunities for you to jump in and be a part of what we're doing right now. Thank you for giving. Thank you for your generosity. Guys, we will be back next Sunday. Next Sunday, continuing our series, The Deeper Life. We're going to talk about surrender next Sunday. All right, guys, love you. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. See you guys.